Uh, what I'll do now, I've got some notes just so I don't forget anything. When the council are summonsing people to court, what in fact they actually do, the council hire the court for the day. As they've hired the court for the day, that includes the magistrates, the clerks and all the administration staff. Because they have hired the court for your liability hearing, they have set the stage and set the field and agenda to suit themselves. So no justice is going to be done and it is in fact unlawful. So just to sum up a little bit, the council privately rent the courtroom. They then seek private judgments. These are not lawful. They are private judgments because the council has a higher, as I say, of the courtroom and the staff. The hearing is not actually associated with the magistrate's court. The ma magistrates are acting as adjudicators and not judges. And that is why if you ask a magistrate at one of these hearings if they are sitting on their oath, they will often refuse to answer. Because if they are sitting on their oath, that means they must uphold the law and abide by the law. And that is why they never admit to sitting on their oath. And that is why you are going to be railroaded that they are as adjudicators purely for and on behalf of the council. <coughs> the judgments are in fact beyond the power of the magistrate's court. All the judgments are then enforced by private bailiffs. Again, this is what I was saying, the bailiffs are actually hired by the council, not the courts. If a court were to send bailiffs, you would know they would have the proper documentation, the letter headed, with the crown seal on. The bailiffs are actually privately hired by the council. Once you know that, you know they have no real jurisdiction and no real teeth, and you can challenge them on that point. Right, council tax is actually a private revenue collection agreement. Yes, it is an agreement. And it is not, and you can check this out, it is not enforced by the United Kingdom courts. That may shock you, but it is a private agreement. And only if you agree to pay it, will they chase you for it. Obviously I don't agree to pay it. So in short, a magistrate's court is being used purely as a place of business. It is a place of business and that's why they don't like you, I or anybody else going in there with recording devices, cameras, voice recorders or anything else because they don't want you to see what's going on and what illegal activities is occurring in there. I've been asked since the last couple of videos by many people why I've stopped paying the council tax. I'm not opposed to paying council tax if it's just and lawful. They've never actually proven to me that it's lawful. And when I've looked at their figures that they've provided, and they're very scarce, I've broken it down for fire, police, ambulance, have my bins emptied, the streets cleaned and the street lighting. It basically works out about £350. So I asked the council what the £700 plus extra was for. They won't tell me. So I basically said, if you won't tell me, I'm not going to pay you. I offered to contract with the council to pay for the services I was using. They refused. So, the, you know, I've offered. They refused it. So where do we go from here? It's, some people say, well, you should pay for services you're getting. Well, I agree. But until the council contract with me, I'm not going to pay them anything. Similar situation if you take your car to a garage for mechanical work done. If they provide, present you with a bill at the end for £1,000, you want it itemised. You want it broken down to know exactly what you're paying for. If they don't break it down, you're hardly going to pay that bill. If they do break it down and then say, oh well, we've charged you £350 for waxing and polishing your car, which you didn't ask for, you're going to turn around and say, well I'm not paying for that, I didn't ask for it. I was paying purely for mechanical maintenance. So, same with the council. 
I object to paying two and a half thousand pounds to half a dozen silly buggers on a sunny afternoon cutting a ribbon to open something or other and then going off for a champagne party. I'm not paying for that. That money should be going to our education, into our libraries, into our schools, to things that we need, not for them swanning about in chauffeur driven limos and having parties. So that's my position. You may disagree with it, you may not. But I will pay the council for services subject to value. And it has to be subject to value. If they won't contract with me, then I'm not paying them. I've informed them that, I served notice on them to that effect. And two years, two and a half years down the line now, the council, they won't contract, so they've had no money from me. And that's the way it's going to stay. So I hope this has been of some help to you. Uh, everything I've told you, you can check out. It can be verified. And if you're like me, and you travel in this path of a freeman on the land, you need to know this information. I can only point you in the right direction. The real work must come from yourselves. You have to do your own research. Because by doing that research is where you really learn. So I hope it has been of some use. And only thing I can wish you all now is the very best of health and good luck for 2012. Because believe you me, after March next year, the bubble's going to burst, I think, financially. And we're all going to need as much help as we can. So good luck everybody and take care.